All right, so this is my chariot for today. Uh, it was my chariot yesterday, and it'll be my chariot for a few days. We're supposed to get uh, rain here on Thursday, so I'm trying to get as much nitrogen out as I can. But I would like to talk about my grandfather's old rutabaga. Rutabaga. Hmm. Here's something I never saw before. What is this thing? Somebody's thermos. Clean canteen. It's insulated. It's like new. I'm going to take that home. Anyway, this was my grandfather's rutabaga. That's what he called it, the rutabaga. It's a Studebaker. Um, what does that say? See, he bought it used. He didn't buy it new, obviously. I think he hated this thing. But I love those hood ornaments on there. And because I know there's no bees, I'm going to lift the hood. And it is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Flathead 6-cylinder. Look at that strapping battery in there. Holy smokes. It's still got oil in the... Uh... Kind of wonder if this thing's seized. I'm sure it's seized. I think it'd be cool as hell to pull the engine out of that thing. Wouldn't it be cool as hell to pull the engine out of that thing? One, two, three, four, five, six. It is. It's a six-cylinder. Six-volt starter on that thing. Wow. Well, let's see. I'm going to pop the hood. The, oh, let's see if I can get the, that off of there. Anything left in it? Nah. Looks moist in there, though. Anyway. Yeah, a tree fell on it at some point. I really should take that should take that uh, hood ornament off of there because they're they're cool um, yeah here's the here's the uh, the tree that fell on it phone number three two seven was that three two seven eight six I think that's what it said yeah that's all they were really uh, had a split rear end yeah, had a, yeah had an air splitter in it my grandfather, he got all the tire miles out of them tires, I can tell you that. Uh, bent the frame in this, if I remember the stories correctly. And you can see that they put flat, uh, flat steel on there. And I think right here they definitely did bolt on the... Uh, they bolted uh, plate steel there for the weight. You know, these old trucks... <laughs> I don't know what year it is, but these old trucks... Here's something else, and that, is that a split rim? That's not a split rim. Those old rims, you know. What an old thing. Old piece of farm history. But that's all that's left of the rutabaga, the rutabaga thing there. Yeah, 827. I don't know, it's 8.3, something like that. Yeah, anything in the cab? think anything could have survived I mean everything is you know this thing's pretty pretty shot the gas tank is out of it you can see that was there at the corner it's probably oh look at this guy go the old radial engine what a beauty what a beauty anyways I like old airplanes I like anything with an engine in it if you didn't know um, it had a hundred mile an hour speedo on there probably a three speed or something like that but you can't really tell much the gas is empty for sure I don't see anything of value in it other than that engine that engine and possibly transmission who knows who the hell knows I know that he was uh, he never liked it from what I understand he had a GMC as well was, he called it the general mess of crap you know, there's some kind of liquid in there. Should I open it? Let's open this thing. May as well, right? We're gonna open it. Probably coffee. Look at ants in it. Sixteen ten stainless steel, and the water still looks drinkable. Water. Vacuum insulated. If this thing's made in the United States, I'm taking it with me. Food grade stainless, vacuum insulated, hand washing recommended. U 
U.S. patent number. Eighteen dash eight food grade stainless. It's a nice little thermos. I think I'm going to take it with me. You know, you find something like that laying on the ground. Somebody dropped it. They're probably hunting in here. Nice red oak. The only problem with this farm. I mean, there's a lot of problems with this farm. The only real problem with this farm is that it's at the end of a runway. And all you hear all the time is those airplanes as they come up. Now, my uncle, he claims that he don't hear it anymore. And my mother, my mother said that she didn't hear it either. Well, my father, when he started to date my mom, when he started to date my mom, Apparently, he said, man, how can you stand the noise over here from all the airplanes? Now, you got to understand, back, back in the 60s when my mom and dad were dating and, uh, you know, courting and doing whatever they did when they did it, um, the, uh, the airplanes were louder because they weren't required to have mufflers on them. They were just open head let her rip kind of things so anyway the wheat looks pretty good it just needs uh, the nitrogen that it's getting now I am putting 17 and a half gallons of 32 percent to the acre which equals out to about 63 units of nitrogen I did put <coughs> um, the black fertilizer on that I had bought uh, let's see what would you call it well it's uh, ocean grow fertilizer um, I put that on there and that is processed food waste so I put that on here so there is there is nitrogen here it's just it's just not um, readily available it has to be broke down as we go you know so now that I'm back in this cab and I got to turn it I got to get moving so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna just gonna roll with it I'm not going super fast 11 mile an hour. I, I have been going 12. I have to slow down. And... What the hell is wrong? This, this sprayer uh, controller has a very uh, slow response time, which I'm grateful for most of the time. But sometimes you want it to adjust quick, like the old uh, the old sprayer. The old sprayer does, or not the old. What about the other? The other navigator that I have, that thing will respond like uber fast, uber fast. Now, this here from that terrace down, this was always pasture for the heifers. My grandfather and grandmother had had uh, pasture down here for the heifers. I pushed it out and I made it a field. And the best soybeans I had last year were right here. And it looks like the wheat is just doing phenomenal as well, so I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to, I'm not going to complain. I'm going to be quite happy and I'm going to fertilize it accordingly. I do have some 2,4-D in here. Uh, the label only calls for a half a pint to the acre, which I could imagine is just for suppression until um, the wheat gets up and above, up and above the, uh, any weeds that could possibly be there and there is some weeds out here nothing that I'm too alarmed with I don't even know what this little weed is called but it doesn't get very tall it's at the end of its life now anyhow so and there's a deer stand right in there um, this is a pretty steep little spot uh, the, the jury is out as to what I'm gonna plant here I would really like to plant corn here after the wheat uh, I think I've said it a thousand times that I'm going to be turning the wheat uh, chemically turning the wheat to get it off the fields that much faster so you know I, and that's really what I'm planning on doing now let's raise that up a little bit and we're going to hit the auto steer somebody asked me a little bit about this auto steer whether I still had it or what the deal was now, I'm spraying right over the top of this terrace here. There's a bunch of little sprigs of stuff that's coming up. 
I'm going to come over with the brush hog and I'm going to brush hog that off of there. There's, and the nitrogen that's going on there is actually uh, aiding in the decay of the wood because uh, my uncle allowed the former farmer here to let those trees grow up. And I mean, we're talking from 2000 and oh, well, it wasn't even 2000. My grandfather died in 1992. My uncle, he farmed it till 2002 and then he rented it out since then. So we're talking 21 years and I think it was 2018 or 2019 when I, 2019 I think when I, uh, boy, when I started farming here, um, when I took it back over, I got to, and these damn things, I just got to get them, I got to get them chewed off. Shut that off. Boy. And then you come around here. This is pretty simple deal. See, watch that. And then we're steering again. So we're auto steering. Now I'm just going to go flat out. We're running at 12.4 mile an hour. 17 and a half gallons to the acre. That's a half a pint of 2,4-D to the acre. Um, really, it's not going to do a hell of a lot other than take those little broadleaf bastards and and suppress them enough that the wheat will get up and above its head and shade it out. Uh, we're supposed to have 80 some degree weather coming. So I'm going to take my life into my own hands and walk around the old corn cribs and stuff. Here's a old set of uh, cultivators. Uh, they're not actually cultivators. I guess this is a harrow, like a drag harrow. Yeah, that's what it is. It's an old harrow. And I think that's a Minneapolis Moline corn picker. This is the corn crib. Obviously, it's in a sad state of affairs. I just wonder if this wood... I'm pretty sure this is all oak. My grandfather would have built this. And, uh, you know, you just get some concrete on there, lay some boards out, and just start building. And I'm sure he did. And they even took the care to make a little notch there so that your fingers would fit behind there. Um, yeah, look at that. But, you know, with time, everything rots. You know, it just rots. Now, the last time I was in this barn, it's been a long time ago now, it was actually still standing uh, enough. It wasn't perfect, but it was standing enough. I wondered, what the hell? There's, here's some of the old beams, this old oak beam or whatever. What the heck was that? You know, there's a, it's like a room without a view. Is there a door there? There was just a window there. I don't know what would have went in there. Maybe it was a foul up in the construction, but usually stuff. Uh, they might have had something in the upper part of it. Uh, you know, hay bales or whatever, and they come down and then you'd grab them out that way. I'm not sure about this part of the barn. Yeah, there's really nothing over there. Oh, that's got to be what it is. I mean, it's something. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not versed in the construction on this one. This was all hay. This was full of straw. Years ago, it was full of straw. And uh, All right, so here's the part where I'm going to take my life into my own hands. And I'm not up to date on a tetanus shot, but let's see how how we make out. There's part of the original construction. That's all stone and some kind of a mortar, which that mortar would have been uh, some kind of limestone mortar in there. There's the straw. Um, peg and beam, post and beam, or uh, mortise and tendon. Mortise and tenon. Let's see if I can get over here. I know there was the old... There was an old grain drill in here, and it's still in here. They put it in there. It's all smashed now. It was an old Van Brunt. I don't think it was an Ontario. John Deere Van Brunt. Von Brunt. But it's it's due. The backbone is broke. You know, it's it's starting to crack right there. It's gonna it's gonna fall in definitely gonna fall in somebody tried propping it up down there with cement block at some point but you know eventually it will be dust eventually it'll be dust so and when I do purchase this place it's just gonna have to come down you know it all has to come down 
and the cleanup, you know, it's going to be expensive, but you got to you got to clean it up. It can't just be left here to rot. Um, especially because there's yeah, you just can't let stuff rot. It, it, they don't want you to do that. They call them derelict buildings here. This little fucker tried to get me early, but ow. Look at that steel. It's got a big old square nut on it and that was part of the construction here and that is forged. And look, there's a star on that old hinge there. Oh my God. This shaft, oh, what is this? Is this the old, what is this guy? Yep, oh, I can't believe I ripped that out of there. I'm gonna take that home. So that must have been what held two pieces of wood together somewhere along the lines. I don't know if I'm gonna take it home or not, but I'm definitely gonna set it up against that tree there so after I purchase the place I'll pick it up then this fuckers heavy oh that's forged steel so yeah scrappers dream these things I think that shaft is neat look at the size of that nut that's like an inch and a quarter an inch, yeah, inch and a quarter thick like down there it's not an inch and a quarter down there it's a yeah it's hammered over so they put that thing into that wood and then peened that over. There's a big old washer on there. I'm telling you, that was forged into that wood. I'll bet you cut that open, you'd make some cool knives out of that. Matter of fact, I'll bet that would make some cool, a cool knife. Cool knives, you could cut that up. I know a guy. Um, you ever watch the Forged in Fire? Forged in fire. Well, there was a Filipino guy. His name was, uh, yeah, uh, Ryu Lim. My wife went to church with him before he was on the show, of course. But she was on there, and he forges. And we, well, she talks some more than I do. I don't think I've ever spoken with him, but she talks some. And uh, she does some embroidery work for him. And she has, in the past, done some embroidery work. So that's that. Um, but. He still does the forging, and that's what his business is, so maybe I can take it and send it up to him and have a knife made out of that. I think my mother, or even my uncle, would appreciate something like that. Look at these. Just the... What in the hell? I think that has to do with uh, lightning rods, more than likely. There's an electric box here. Yeah, electric, electrical box. There's copper in there. Here, I know there's an old well over here. Oh, I pushed this stuff all out. This was all overgrown. I brush hogged it and pushed it out with the skiddly skid steer. Huh. There's a window out of something. Looks like a Jeep. <laughs> I don't know anybody that owned a Jeep though. Uh, the well is over there someplace. I don't know. We uh, took that well and uh, put a big old capstone over the top of it so nobody could fall in. Uh, what's in here? There's an old bucket. There's nothing left down here. I think this is my grandparents. You know, got a. Ooh! There, I just about died. But this is neat. You know, this is an old bank barn, not a bank barn, but a Dutch, what they called a Dutch style barn. Uh, I know what this is. That's for the hay elevator. This actually had a center fill hay elevator in it. So my grandfather was really good about putting that stuff up there. Um, well, here's a, uh, here's a magazine. Let's see how old these magazines are. Oh, what are these magazines? I'd love to find an old diary or something of my grandmother's. These are 15 cents. Let's see. It went to Sinclair was the last name. So it was something that probably somebody that rented the house here. Uh, these are definitely 60s styles, you know. Wow. What's this say? Pearl necklace. A graduated pearl necklace. 
I'd like to see a date, but whatever. What the hell is this? What is that? Kind of a knob. Oh, it's a drawer, dresser drawer. Yeah, dresser drawer knobs. There's your old Johnny Hopper. Anybody in there? That's probably worth some freaking money. Some of these damn toilets, it's just, it amazes me sometimes as to what they find are worth money or not. And this thing could all come crashing down on my head. So if you're seeing this, I survived. Well, that's nice. Made in USA. Did it say fiberware? Fiberware? Eh, something like that. An old oil tank. Uh, the mangers are. They redid the mangers. Um, before my grandfather, at least, I don't think they milked it down here, but they could have. I can't remember. I don't know. I don't remember anybody ever saying that they did or didn't. But the hand yoon beams in here. This has been. Yeah, you can see how that one's rotted off there. But these mangers are all falling in. Fall falling down. Look at the concrete's going out the back. This whole building is hinging on these lolly columns here. Yep. It's kind of an amazing thing. There's probably a shit ton of weight above my head that I don't really want to get into. But, you know, these old buildings, people used to hide stuff in them. You know, hey, take the, take the stash down to that old barn and put it up in the the hidey hole you just never know with some of this stuff i always thought take a look there was a guy and he's dead now but he was scrapping out a place and when he scrapped it out oh well, there's the toilet back of the to toilet tank oh there's somebody wrote something there four inches four inches of some sort but there was something here oh, a little spoon dish for on the stove <laughs> Anyways, that old guy, he's dead now. His name was Richie Smith, and he was scrapping a place. They asked him to scrap a place, and he found a box of old coins. And in that box of old coins were large cents and things like that. There was a lot, a lot of valuable coins in there. He said they were, like, new as well. So when you got valuable stuff like that, that's steel. There's steel sheeting. I don't know what that's for. Um, you know, you take money like that, you know, and he didn't give it back to the property owner. He took it, which I thought was wrong of him. But, you know, these old barns and stuff, it's a possibility. It's a great possibility that there could have been, you know, coins stashed in here someplace. There's some of these old furniture, I guess, got thrown in there. And that doesn't look like it's been in there that long because I really don't remember that being there. And that wood is not really weathered at all. So, whatever that is, <laughs> you got chucked in there. I'd like to see Jewish lightning hit this thing and take it all down, honestly. But, you never know. Anyway, I'm going to get back to my chariot.